Live from Shadow Mirror Studios, this is the Talkie Box Podcast. Got milk? I totally stole that one. You did. Like, that's, there's no, no mistaking that mistaking one. No mistaking that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the only other way you could do it is if you, like, made the punctuation a bit different. Because I think it goes, got milk. Yeah. Okay, but like, if you just went, got, got milk. milk. <laughs> got milk. Yeah. I think I got that would, milk. Very declarative. Got milk. Yeah. Uh, I'm your host, Dave. And joining me this evening is uh, Justin. Yep. And Jeremy Adam. Hi. And that's it. That's it. That's us. Yep. Welcome. Welcome to Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies drink free. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to open a club called Thunderdome. <laughs> Thunderdome, where the ladies drink free. Yeah. It's probably already happened. Yeah. It probably has. Yeah. Probably in Australia. Mm. Um, what do we got today? Oh, Anything man. Good? I don't know. What yeah. do you, what do you, what do you, uh... I mean, last time we talked about Avengers at length. Yeah, and I think we could continue to do that, but... Yeah, I mean, Jeremy had one here, so... He, we, um, we have could. You seen it? Yeah. Okay, course. you've seen it. But I don't want to cause redundancies in conversation. Right. Uh, but you talk about Netflix. We every do. Episode. <laughs> we do. But we talk about different shows. That's you know? true. Speaking of other movies... Other movies. I do know there are several sequels coming out, or, or have been greenlighted at least. Yeah. Um... Apparently, there's going to be at least two more Fast and Furious movies. Oh, my God. Why? Plus a spin-off. Oh, God. How do you spin off of a Fast and Furious? It's going to be called Hobbs and Shaw, and it's based on the characters of The Rock and Jason Statham. Faster and <laughs> furious, sir. I'm sure they'll call one of these movies up. Um, we've already talked before about uh, uh, Bill and Ted 3. Yeah, we have. That's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and now Bad Boys 3 is also coming out in 2020. Bad Boys 3. I feel yeah. like 2020 will be a very consequential year yeah. for all sorts of things. I've heard of a lot of things that are, say, in 2020. Yeah. It just seems very big, like it's going to be a big year big, in the world big of year. entertainment. Big, yeah. big, big year. <laughs> yeah, Bad Boys for Life. Bad that one's gonna be called. Boys <laughs> yeah. for Life. Oh, <laughs> I've, uh, why haven't they come out with a What You're Gonna Do yet? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Bad Boys, what you gonna do? Yeah, that's Bad Boys 4. Bad what Boys 4, what you gonna do? Well... Yeah, I mean, but... Uh, they're, they're, I, I've heard speculation that the PlayStation 5 will come out in 2020. Already? Uh, We're already yeah. doing a 5. Yeah, well, well the I mean, 4 came out in, like, what, 2013? 13. So it'll have been 7 years at that point. Still. Yeah, that's that's about the life cycle of a, of a console these days. When did the 3 come out? The 3 came out in 2007. Okay. Hmm. So at some point, I should get my Xbox One. <laughs> you should. You or should. A PS4. Now, here, here's a question. Yeah. If you're going to upgrade yeah. to the Xbox One, are you going to go baseline Xbox One, or are you going to go no. top tier and go Xbox One S? And or the X. Uh, Xbox the One X. X is actually what I've been thinking about. Um, although, really, the only, from what I can tell, the only benefits of getting the X is if you happen to have a top-of-the-line TV yeah. to really take advantage of the X's, like, uh, true... HD, yeah, well, all that shit. Well, uh, that's the same argument that I'm going with my, on myself with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Like, yeah. I would really like one. And I have a capable TV. I'm just never around it anymore. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't really play as many games stationary as I used to mm. because of the Switch. It's just yeah. that back and forth makes it so mm. convenient. You just want to play with it all the time. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was, actually, and forth. I was telling Jeremy Adam, oh. like, before the show, like, there's so many books and games and TV shows I just do not have time mm -hmm. for. No, because and we're we're surrounded, like, people are constantly producing stuff. You don't have yeah. time to consume it all. But um, one of the games that I've heard is probably, like, the epitome of what the PlayStation 4 Pro is supposed to be is, is the new God of War game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard, like, nothing but fantastic things about it. I actually got to watch a demonstration for about... Probably about an hour of gameplay. I was hanging out with a friend and he was playing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was playing it on just a regular PlayStation 4 yeah. on a regular HD TV. And it was gorgeous. Okay. And apparently on a PlayStation Pro with the nice big screen setup, it's like the the example of what PS4 Pro is all you about. You can actually feel the sweat coming off of Kratos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just motorboat. Gross. <laughs> no, I mean rowboats. Sorry, there's like lots of rowboats. Oh. Yep, lots of rowboating and stories on the boat. There's a lot of stories on the boat. That's probably my favorite part about it, 
in the new one is Kratos will tell stories to his son, but they're just bad stories. Because it's, you know, it's Kratos. He's very serious. He doesn't have, have these, you know, oh, I'm going to tell a good story. It's right. like, you know, something like the frog wanted to get across the, or like Scorpion wanted to get across the river. He helped the frog. The, frog's like, the frog was like, I'll help you, but don't sting me. Scorpion's like, okay, I won't sting you. Halfway across the river, the frog, or the frog got stung and they both drowned. And then he's just done with that story. <laughs> there you have it. And his son's I mean, that's like, a real story, but there's also like a, supposed to be a moral to There's a moral story. to it. Yeah. yeah. His son's like, that's not a good story. I didn't say it was good. <laughs> just a story. It's but there's other story. storytelling goes on the boat as goes on, on the boat as well. But mm -hmm. like one of the things that I thought was really cool is how open world it is now. And mm -hmm. open world games are finally coming to the forefront and they like they're my favorite style of game. I love the freedom of them. Yeah. Um, I saw a trailer for a new game out of Russia uh, just today called Atomic Heart. Okay. Uh, and it looks crazy. Right. It, it, it has that open world feel. When you're watching the trailer, it feels like a mix of Bioshock and Fallout. I've, it, I've heard that. Yeah, it, somebody posted something about it on Facebook today. I didn't have time to actually watch the trailer. Which, but. which Bioshock we're talking, like Infinite or like the original? Right? I'm thinking like the original okay, is okay. what I was what I never played Infinite. Okay. I only ever played Bioshock one and two. I really enjoyed Infinite. I, I've yeah. heard it's but great, it, but it's a, it definitely a different feel to it. Yeah, like they're very the, the other like, Bioshocks. They're very different, like just completely different elements to them. Yeah. Uh, but either way, it's it's a gorgeous looking game. It looks crazy. Um, a little bit of gore and some crazy uh, monster looking things and it kind of looks like a post it almost has like a post apocalyptic feel but what apparently is is it's an alternate timeline in the Soviet Union Russia okay. so it, it kind of it kind of has that feel of fallout in that sense too in the sense that it's an alternate reality only this kind of feels like from the Russia side so I'm interested in playing it just to see if I can make any of that mesh up in my yeah. wide world Fallout fantasy, okay. and like, maybe that's what happened. Have over they on the said what it's coming out on, or is it like everything? PlayStation Four for now, but okay. there's no release date as of yet. So it's like brand new, like just announced, kind of. Yeah, okay. brand, like announced like three or four days ago. Oh, okay. Now the speaking of announcements, uh, we have E3 mm -hmm. coming up here uh, next month, and, and Walmart leaked. Some of the things that have not been announced yet. What did they? Would they leak? Um, there's this huge list. Um, I don't. I only paid attention to like a few of them. Uh, some of them was like the Division Two that's on there. Some kind of Splinter Cell, like just a Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. But what caught my attention was um, Prime Four is now on there, meaning that we're probably going to get that maybe this year. Metroid Prime. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, and then Borderlands Three. And Gears of War Five were on there. Oh, so that makes me very happy because wow. I've been waiting a long time for Borderlands Three. Yeah. See now, like right now, I'm stuck in this limbo. I play a very limited range of games. Like I, I like what I like, and mm -hmm. that's what I stick yeah. to. So I'm just like chomping at the bit for E3 because I want to hear what the Pokemon Company is going to do. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear what Bethesda Game Studio is going to do. Yeah. And my understanding is, is we should be getting announcements from both of them. At E3, right. and I really, really want some new Bethesda games, man. I've been I mean, playing the hell out of Skyrim yeah. on the Switch. At this point, it's time for another Elder this, Scrolls, right? Well, Elder Scrolls, from what uh, Todd Howard has said, Elder Scrolls uh, is not happening yet. That Right now, they have two big, big games mm -hmm. that are in that same style of Skyrim and of Fallout and all of right. those. It has that same Bethesda Game Studios feel because they have a very similar yeah. feel to their games um, that they're working on before they start working on Elder Scrolls 6. They have, um, for their E3 thing, they have registered a slot for an untitled um, RPG. Um, same with CD Projekt Red. They're going to be there announcing a new RPG, which is more than likely going to be Cyberpunk and... That is also a game okay. that Ooh. has, like, because th they announced it six years ago. Wow. Like, they just had a trailer, and then they just said, coming when it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been waiting six what a years great, for it. Like, what, 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 what a great tagline, coming when it's ready. We're not going to give you that bullshit as soon, because yeah. we, yeah. we don't know. I, I, mean, can't, I can't think of a lot of cyberpunk games out there besides, like, Deus Ex. 
Yeah, but Cy- Cyberpunk is really cool. My understanding is that one of the games that Bethesda was supposedly going to announce last year that they might announce this mm-hmm. year is going to be more along the lines of a futuristic sci-fi okay. vein. That mm-hmm. they're saying that what the rumor was is that the game that they're going to release next is basically tying in all of their worlds together. It's basically would be saying that Skyrim and Fallout take place in the same universe. Really? And that this would also take place in the same universe. Granted, that's all just wild Reddit speculation, yeah. but still interesting to think about. Mm-hmm. Yes. I noticed Valve. that we have not gotten an invitation to E3. We have not. <laughs> and That would be a really I cool think, thing to be a part of. Yeah, Talkie Box, I think, deserves a spot at E3. Absolutely. E3 coverage? Yeah. Just do it straight from the floor mm-hmm. with phones in our pockets think, and lapel mics? It'd be great. Right. I think you guys might have a chance if uh, Netflix is going to be there in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> but like, all right, let's just go pander to the people that we talk about all the time and, you yeah. know, sell out uh, and, you know, Get more coverage and more money to do fun See, things. See, I don't like the term sellout. What I do like is here is like make money. I like make money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <That's laughs> or selling out the product, which is us. Yeah. <laughs> I'd happily do it. Speaking of alternate I'll wear shorty shorts. <laughs> um, and not not Netflix, but oh. Hulu. Hulu. Oh. Uh, have you heard or seen uh, The Handmaid's Tale? No. No. I've I, heard great things. I wasn't sure what it was like. It look, It didn't look like something I was gonna enjoy when I first like when it first started being a thing. And I sat down and actually watched the first episode of it, and it's a really cool show. Like, it's it's it kind of puts a lot of things in perspective because what it, it's essentially an alternate reality where um, women have become, uh, for the most part, infertile um, all across the globe. And there is only a hand, like some small percentage of women who are able to bear children. And so society has like rallied around this religion that uh, basically sets women into certain roles. And the ones who can bear children are, are considered handmaids. And they're essentially raped to bear children. And it's like, it's a hard watch. It sounds um, like it. And at least the first the first episode, like, it, it just kind of goes into it. Well, like, I've seen, like, previews and clips and stuff like that, and I get, like, a V for Vendetta meets the village kind of feel. Sort of. That, that Like, that's what I'm getting. Like, the yeah. costumes feel very... It's a V very, for it's Vendetta. Very Puritan. Yeah. Is what it is. It's and like, that's where I'm getting, like, the village part from. Yeah, like, because it, it starts, like... There, there's a lot of flashbacks in it, and you find out, like, you, you realize that this isn't, like, old times or something or anything. Like, this is now. And oh. and in the flashbacks, it's, you know, people hanging out and going to parties and, like, driving around and doing whatever they do. And then it goes, you know, just a couple years later into this very Puritan society where women are subjugated to all this, like, really shitty, awful stuff. Yeah. So. Like rape. Yeah. It's pretty shitty. Yeah. Well, it sounds interesting. How far have you gotten into it? One episode. One episode, <laughs> nice. man. You are digging deep. Yeah. Woo! Because there's so many damn things I'm watching all at once. Uh, I recently started watching Atlanta. I've heard um, it's fantastic. It is fantastic. Donald, I, I, I love Glover Donald Glover. Is amazing. I love Donald Glover. I've watched his new video. Have you seen the new music video for This Is America? I haven't. I've heard all, I've heard it's... It's incredible, it's man. Old, you know, yeah. like, I'm not really into hip-hop very much. Mm. Um, but, like, the video itself and the song, like, it just... It's very deep, and there's a lot of great symbolism in it. And it's yeah. just, it's fascinating to watch. It's a really, really cool music video, really good music video, and it's actually really important. You're getting a lot of people talking about how important this music video is right. as well. But then, just from a song perspective, like it's a cool listen. Like it's a cool listen. That's good. Um, but I've always been a big fan of Donald Glover and Childish mm-hmm. Gambino. Uh, I'm really excited to see him as Lando Calrissian in, in Solo. Solo yeah. Which is coming out uh, real soon, I think. Yeah, it's coming out later this month. Later this month. It man. might be out by the time this video hits. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm excited to see that. I'm not sure how I feel about the guy they have to play young Han Solo. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he quite... I don't recognize him. I don't know him for anything. I don't know him from anything. He doesn't quite look enough like Harrison Ford. The weird for thing me. is, I was talking about this to, to somebody uh, the other day, but like when you think about the continuity of it, this movie can't take place more than a few years before New Hope does. Yeah. But then they have this young guy 
playing on very young Harrison Ford, and it's you know, and then you have you have Donald Jordan Glover Ford. playing a young Billy D. Williams, yeah. and it's like, does this guy grow up to be Billy D. Williams? <laughs> like, it, it, it goes back to the whole uh, "How I Met Your Mother." Mm-hmm. You know, the, the show "How I Met Your Mother." Yeah. Uh, the, how the lead character is an adult in the show, mm-hmm. but yet the voiceover is Bob Saget. Right. Like, he just turns into Bob Saget ten years later. <laughs> like, it, it makes no sense at all. Yeah. But it still, it looks like it's going to be really cool. Donald Glover looks like he's he's got, like, a lot of swagger in there, and I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what Amelia Clark's role is in it as well. I have a feeling that most of the people in this movie are going to die. Probably. Except for... Han, Chewie, and Lando. Well, I feel like it would only make sense. No. And we already know that a Star Wars story series has no problem killing off a whole bunch of people. Uh, we saw it with Rogue One. You I mean, you had to know those people were going to die. You <laughs> knew immediately going into that yeah. movie, if you had any sort of pretense about Star Wars, you knew they were all going to die. Yeah. And when they did, people still freaked out in the theater, yeah, and it made no true. sense. <laughs> No! <laughs> ah! Like guys, I they get down. away with it. Like guys, let's all of them. Like all of them. Shush, shush. Everyone. Now, you should have come to terms with this like an hour and a half ago. Yeah. Let's just. Like when when they showed up on the screen, you should have known. You should have known. Let's yeah. go. Oh man, they seem interesting. Hope they don't die. I'm pretty sure that's one of the only movies I've seen in recent history that was not a horror movie, where. Everyone dies. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that like there's only two characters in that movie who don't die, and they're the villains. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else dies. Yeah. So it, it it was uh it was definitely weird in that sense, but I think that was what made it such a cool movie. Oh, like yeah. it was had a real grit to it. I mm-hmm. really like that. I'm hoping that they carry some of that like realism and like grittiness to Solo. Mm-hmm. But I'm getting a feeling it's going to be a little more lighthearted. You have Ron Howard behind the wheel. Yeah. And I love Ron Howard's movies. Mm-hmm. But I just get a feeling, you know, you got a young space cowboy that we're going to get some a lot of snark and, and That's fun. just not the type of movie to have that kind of dark grittiness yeah. just because of who it is. It's yeah. going to be that lighthearted kind of funny, witty banner the entire movie yeah. rather than that serious, you know, lives are at yeah. stake here. It's... I'm gonna go smuggle something. I'm gonna go smuggle something. Yeah. You know, see, like I always like space cowboys. Space cowboys yeah. are a lot of fun. Yeah, like I mean, I, I've always been a huge fan of Firefly, and that's all it is. Space Firefly. Cowboy. Uh, let's Cowboy Bebop. That's mm-hmm. another space cowboy. Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of a space cowboy I mean, yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, space Truckers. Yep. You, you remember Space Truckers? No. <laughs> you don't remember Space Truckers? Dennis Hopper, Ben Affleck, and Stephen Dorff in that. Yeah. yeah. No. Am I thinking of a different space movie? Was it Steven Dorff and not Ben Affleck? It might be. Because I'm trying to think of who the woman was. The woman was in um, all kinds of stuff. She was in a Beethoven movie. She was in Batman and Robin. Kim Basinger? No, she has Cold the Kip. very prominent eyebrows. No, very prominent eyebrows. Normally plays a, a bad guy of some kind. Just real... Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> First try. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. All right, you know, I got to look it up. You know I got to. Yeah. Because Space Truckers is one of those movies that I would watch as a kid. Mm. And um, I just always loved it. Uh, you know who else is in there? Uh, uh, Peter Dance. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Is that his I name? Reckon I, I know the Charles name, Dance. Peter Dance. I know, Dance. I know Charles Dance. Yeah, Charles Dance. That's who I mean. Yeah. He's in there. I, d- I feel I get uh, Space Truckers mixed up with Ice Pirates. I don't know if you ever saw that. Ice Pirates. Ron Perlman. George Wendt. Back in the day. Yeah, it was the Stephen ship, Dorff. The ship gets uh, gets herpes. Debbie Mazar, that's who I mean. Oh, Debbie Mazar, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, she was in uh, Empire Records. Yeah. But uh, always One a really fun, movies. interesting movie. Yeah. That picture just makes her look uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, you're making you're taking a picture. Oh, <laughs> oh all right. Hey. Yeah. So, um, speaking of future, hold on. So I wanted to get back to some on Star, on Star Wars. Okay, get back. So to we it. got Solo coming out this year. Uh-huh. Next year, episode nine. Yeah. yeah. What comes out after that? I don't know. Probably, Probably some other spinoff. I like feel, Boba I'm, Fett. I'm, I'm, I was gonna say, is it Fett? 
I feel like it might be Fett. Uh, why haven't we seen a Yoda one, though? Let's see Yoda's origin story. That's what I want to see. Well, I mean, they haven't given us what we wanted yet. Everyone wants a Kenobi, but they haven't. No, I mean, about I, that. I feel like you got a good amount of Kenobi. Yeah, but like, they want more Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got, like, when when Episode 1 came out, he was like, what? He, he, he looked like he was 20s. like 19, 20. Yeah. So he he's, he was a Padawan and then we saw him in Episode the first 1. Three and the Clone Wars. But they yeah. want to see him between 3 and 4. I was, all right, so I mean, that's... There, there's a lot of stuff going on in those... That's what and they, they want to see. They want to see and I'm pretty he sure he was a hermit most of the yeah. time. Just living in a living in a cave down by the river. Yep, learning sand people speech. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I personally just <laughs> don't <laughs> care. Like all these side the side stuff for Star Wars. Like mm. it's just all right. You're just milking it now. Well, of course they're milking it, but I think you know that th- there's something to be said for milking it for our benefit as long as. You have people who care about the characters and the story at mm. its heart. I'm okay with them milking it because yeah. it's just expanding a universe that we and, can escape to. And that's what it is. It's just the expanded universe, except now we get movies of it. Yeah. I mean, there's always books and stuff oh, about yeah. all this stuff. I mean, yeah. they're not going by any of that anymore. No. But, like, it's just now they're making movies of the stuff that, you know, leads up to this yeah. and whatever. I don't have a problem it's, with that. I, I don't see an end in sight for Star Wars in the same way that I don't see an end in sight for the MCU. Yeah. They're going to continue to make these until they're no longer viable. And hopefully they'll, they'll and continue to, to to adapt and expand and, and change I think they things will. And, and push boundaries and stuff. Well, and I think we're going to start seeing a lot more series coming out. And I think we'll probably see some Star Wars series as well, live action Star Wars series. Yeah. Because it just makes sense to continue to give the consumers what they're asking for. People want more Star Wars. They want more MCU. And it's but, not going to help our inability to keep up with all of the entertainment that's shoved down our throats. Mm-hmm. But it'll still be Well, fun. there is a difference with the Star Wars and the MCU thing is Star Wars can keep going. The MCU eventually will run out. Because, I mean, there's only so many superheroes Marvel has. You're right, but... but look, it's still going to be a long, long time, but you could still theoretically make an infinite amount of Star Wars stuff just because of the, the universe. You know, you could just slap a new character on and yeah. put but, him in the universe. But, like, no, I, I disagree with the MCU thing because a lot of these superheroes' mantles have been passed down through the years mm. in the <clears throat> comics, you know? Yeah. Spider-Man wasn't always Peter Parker. Eventually he became Miles Morales, and there was other Spider-Mans as well. There's been you can't other really... Iron Mans and stuff like that. And for us, we can't really envision... You know, somebody other than Tony Stark being Iron Man, but 10, 15 years from now, when the kids who grew up watching these MCU movies, mm-hmm. like, they're going to be ready for that progression. They're going to be ready for that next hero to come And not along. only that, but they're going to start, they're going to start, like, alter, and they've already done this, they've already started altering the comics to, to mesh with the movies. Mm-hmm. And and so to, I, I assume they're going to keep doing that to give the movies more stuff to work with. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I don't see an end in sight for those because... They'll they'll keep grabbing different characters, mm-hmm. and like you look at characters that have never been really big in the limelight that people are clamoring for now, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. They've I been mean, around even, for years. Even the original Avengers of the of the MCU, like yeah. Iron Man, Thor, those were not big characters before those movies came out. No, they be like, they became big characters, and Doctor Strange, yeah. and Black Panther, and Ant Man. These are they're auxiliary characters mm-hmm. in the Marvel universe that have come to take over the Marvel Universe. And we haven't even started looking at how they might integrate X-Men in the future as well yeah. because now they have those guys. Mm-hmm. So the possibilities are endless there, but we're talking about the MCU again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, true. that's what the fans want. That's probably, Well, maybe. no, I think that's what we want that because that's what we talk want. about yeah. a lot. We're nerds. <laughs> it's important to us. It's yeah. it, it really is. It, it, gets me, it gets me all excited. Yeah. Like but You were... Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, if someone disses Spider Man, I can go into a rant about <laughs> why they're wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just you, you you we have a lot of heart in it. We spend a lot of time watching it. But there are so many Spider Man. In fact, I was talking to somebody on on Facebook at some point about you know blah blah, blah Spider Man and how you know there's so many that can go into it with you know not just Peter Parker but also mm-hmm. Ben Riley and all and Miles mm-hmm. Morales. Like, well, they kind of already did Scarlet Spider uh, in the first, you know, in. Uh, Civil War, because that's kind of who he was when he was wearing the hoodie and stuff like that. That's not, not Scarlet Spider. That fell over. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, 
you you can see how they they make references and they drop easter eggs mm. about these different runs at the hero but they're not actually exploring that different run they're yeah. just giving you a little easter egg so all the nerdy people can have their nerdy hearts aflutter and yeah. go like oh that's the thing from the thing and get excited about it and yeah. keep the conversation going you know beating your friends are that's the thing yeah don't and like, and what are you talking about? <laughs> what I'm really excited for is years from now when these these actors that we're that we've been dealing with for this time have, have actually gotten out of the movies and stuff. And then years from now one of them shows up in a movie and you're like, Tony Stark's back! Yep. That's the guy. <laughs> it's gonna happen. What? Yeah. Because you're gonna have people, it's gonna go so far that you're gonna have people that there's no way they're gonna start all the way at Iron Man. Mm-hmm. And go through the universe. They're gonna just step in wherever they step in, and just keep watching the movies from there. Yeah. Well, they could, and eventually they'll go back. Right. They but, could step in at Iron Man, but you know the Iron Man reboot, you know, with the new Tony Stark yeah. or whatever. See now but that that's something I be... think I I think that the MCU is going to be very careful about. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see reboots inside the MCU. Right. You're not going to get a new Iron Man with a new Tony Stark. No. It would be. Ridiculous. Now, if they wanted to do a new Iron Man and like start a new new universe or a new standalone yeah. project, maybe. But that would be. They silly. have recast a couple of characters here and there, mm-hmm. though. A few. And but I mean, many. I don't think they would reboot it and recast. I think it would just be like, this is who's playing this character now. Just mm-hmm. go with it. Yeah. Like, like they did with Don Cheadle instead of Terrence Howard. But the, um, they, I feel like they would keep it only to those more minor characters. You're not going to have a new actor step in and play Tony Stark. There'd be a revolt. Yeah. I mean, people would be happy about it at first, but I mean, that's probably what they're gonna have to do is they're just gonna find the dude who can be, the, you know, the best Robert Downey Jr. he can be. <laughs> no, they're just gonna kill Iron Man before that happens. They'll they kill might. Tony Stark before they recast but him. But that didn't go well in the comics. No one liked that. <laughs> well, then Tony Stark's just gonna go into hiding or be, get cryogenically frozen, or that's what he did in the comics, and no <laughs> one liked that. <laughs> That is one thing I, I see happening with the MCU that you do not see happening in the comics is that is that sense of is that finality. Like when an actor dies, that character's gone, mm-hmm. and they're not coming back. Done. Um, and I don't think we've seen that. Ha- I don't think any of the actors that we've seen in the MCU have died, as far as I know. But um, and that kind of shit happens. It does, and that sucks. But I mean, I mean we, we have seen it happen with Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And and I wonder what they're gonna do. Like, are they going to recast Chekhov, or are they gonna have something where he's just not around anymore? I feel like they're just gonna write him out. Like, sometimes you gotta do those things. Yeah. You gotta write characters out, but it's better. I mean, like, you just have to address it the way that you can, because the solution's not always going to be what they've done in things like the Hunger Games, where you're using CG models to put this person in the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, they use CG models in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, but Carrie Fisher was alive when they did that, and they made the decision after that that they would not use that technology to bring Carrie Fisher back to any of the Star Wars movies. Right. Well, they did do it the, with the, uh, in Rogue One, the no, that, Grand Moff Tarkin, whatever his name was. The, yeah, the Grand Tarkin, but yeah. they, like uh, Grandmaster Tarkin? Grand Moff. Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, Grandmaster. Uh, <laughs> but... They did that, and he they, they had permission from his estate to mm-hmm. do things like that. And he still looked just like a little bit off, yeah, just barely. It was really impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, but they said that they weren't going to use any of that stuff moving forward since Carrie Fisher had died. That they weren't going to right. use her image in that way. She's just done. I still have not seen the new Star Wars movie, so I don't have you know. Not? I have not. Oh wow. wow! Yeah, I know. I'm uh. You're behind. I'm behind. Yeah, yeah. My favorite part was when Shrek showed up. Oh, fucking Shrek! Mm-hmm. Love Shrek. Yeah. On Netflix. And then now. Daffy Duck dunks the ball. I saw that. It yeah. makes me happy. Shrek's on Netflix. <laughs> Shrek, Shrek flicks. Netflix. I'm excited because uh, Runaways got renewed for season two. Oh, did they? Yep. Which is good because uh, I don't know if you guys have Hulu yeah, or have seen Runaways. Um, it ends. It's a terrible ending for the first season, in my opinion. Mm. Um, and I'm not gonna say much about it. It's just, it just, it's just like not satisfying. Deal with it. Mm. And not like, oh, here's a cool thing that happened. Holy shit! 
deal with it. It's just like, deal with it. Well, like we're just gonna stop here? Yeah. Oh, so ju we're, just, we're just done here. That's, that's pretty much just how that goes. And so like I'm, I, I really enjoyed the show so far. I, I have great expectations for it, but like the way they, they ended the first season was, was ridiculously stupid, in my opinion. Ridiculous. But they've been renewed, so we'll see what happens. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, new season of Legion is out right now. I still have not stepped in and watched any of that. Have I, you guys started watching any I of it? I started watching the first season. I'm a few episodes in. Again, it's on Hulu, and I have I don't have great... The reason I haven't watched a lot of these, like, these things on Hulu is that my Hulu keeps messing up. Uh, uh, based on... Uh, mostly because the internet in the, in the house kind of sucks. Yeah. But uh, I have seen the first, I think, three episodes of, of season one of Legion. I really like it. it. It's it's a wild show. Like, you get a you get a little ways in, and you're you're not really sure what's going on. Yeah. But in, a, but in a fun way. Like, it's not like, God... Damn, what the fuck is happening? Like, I can't even watch this. I'm not following it. Like, yeah. you're you don't know what the hell's going on, but you're you feel like you're getting closer. Like, right. you're just like following along with this mystery and trying to piece things together for yourself. Like, so is this real? Yeah. Or is this real? And it just and it leaves a lot of questions for you, but it's uh, very the engaging. The only issue I have with the show is, and it's my own problem, is that. No, like having a familiarity with the character from the comics and I'm trying to go like so which part is this how does this match up and mm -hmm. and maybe it doesn't and I don't I have no idea I don't think it really does from yeah. my understanding yeah. of the character like it's it's a new take it's a different kind of take okay. on the character um hands down the best part about that show is Aubrey Plaza Aubrey Plaza so far I'm really digging her in it she's the best part about that yeah. show um, but I'm excited to check out season two. I haven't watched any of Westworld yet either. Um, uh, another show that I'm hearing great things about. And we talked about the very first episode of Talkie Box. Yep. I really need to go back and start watching season two so uh, we can talk about that some more. Absolutely. But I like marathoning shows. Yeah. It's more fun that way. Like there, there's been times where I've actually waited for a show to completely end before I'll actually start watching it. Um. It's you harm shows that me. way, Dave. Sorry, man. No, you're not. <laughs> not really. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Oh, boy. But then there's shows that just keep on going. I'm like, I wish you'd end so I could watch you, but no. But see, sometimes you end up getting, like, really... It gets disappointing. Like, there are some shows that you hear nothing but great things about, great things about, great things about, and you want to watch and you wait for it to finish, and then it finishes and you hear its terrible ending and you don't yeah. have the desire to watch it. I'll give you a perfect example. Lost. I've never yeah. watched Lost. Okay. I heard about for years mm -hmm. how great Lost was, how much I needed to watch Lost. Everybody was telling me, years and years and years, I got to watch, and then Lost ended, and they're like, it ended terribly. I hated the ending. I'm like, well, I guess I'm not watching Lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched all of Lost, and, it, and Lost is one of those shows that happened um, around the same time as the writer's strike, mm -hmm. and so that was a big issue with Lost. Same, same thing with, with, same Heroes. with Heroes. Yeah. And um, and I actually enjoyed Lost. I didn't really have an issue with the ending, uh, but the my only problem with Lost was that you actually get lost in it. Like there's and not in the good way of like ah oh, I'm in this world. It's like what the fuck is this about again? Like where the hell are we? Like why what's is this happening? happening? Well, um, it's just hard to follow from Lost. lost. Yeah. yeah, like apparently there's just a ton of unanswered questions, and there like kind of is. So I had no desire to pick it up and get infuriated. I, I didn't want to invest, you know, 60, 70 hours yeah. of my life to disappointment and frustration. It is enjoyable to, to if you if you look at it from the perspective of, of it being many interpersonal stories and seeing how those stories progress, it's actually really good. Um, but on the whole, it does get kind of convoluted and weird. That's a shame. So. Yeah. It's a crying ass shame. And then so many of those actors appeared in Once Upon a Time. Like a bunch of them. A bunch? Yeah. Once Upon a Time is a show that I I don't know. I can't get behind it. I started I've I've seen the first like four seasons of it and I've I, and I really enjoyed it. Like I you know, I I watched it and it's good and then there's some actors that kind of come uh the guy who plays Bucky in uh MCU. Yeah, Sebastian Stan. Sebastian Stan, he was in it for a few episodes, played a great Mad Hatter and then he got famous and stopped being on the show. So, 
Yeah. That was unfortunate. These things happen. But it has some really cool stories to it, some really hokey bits to it. A lot of times we're going, why don't you just do this? Yeah. But like, not necessarily plot holes, just flawed logic and stuff. Yeah. It's like, apparently everybody forgot that you have magical powers. You can fix that. <laughs> but, you know, we'll just go with it, just to see where this goes. Yep, just the, the brief amnesia about your powers for the purpose of moving the plot forward. Yeah. See it happen all the time. Yeah, it all... happens in virtually every Star Wars movie. <laughs> um, well, I could shoot lightning from my hands. Shit, why didn't I think about yeah. that? I'll say it again. Jedi are stupid children. Every one of them. They forget that they can... Every one of them has magical powers, super, super, super powers, and they just forget they have them because they have. Oh, I got a laser sword. Stupid. Children. But it's a really cool laser sword. That's great, man. I like laser swords. Laser I want swords a lightsaber. Cool. Yeah. You know what else is cool? Hmm. Everything else they can do. Yeah. Yeah, but like, have you like, seen the laser swords? <laughs> <laughs> like force jump. Force jump's fun. I feel like that's their entire marketing scheme. <laughs> Join yeah, the Jedi. Bzzz, you get one of these. <laughs> this laser sword comes in blue or green. <laughs> <laughs> I want a red one. You're evil. We don't. Talk I want about a purple one, ones. motherfucker. <laughs> All right. You, 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 can you have a purple one? No. Only Sammy Jack gets one. Only of those. Sammy Jack gets a purple lightsaber. <laughs> he wanted to be different. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see any yellow lightsabers though. Not in the movies. Not or that. pink lightsabers. Yeah. Some in the games though. The video games. Did you? The video games. The did white. Mm hmm. Or black. Because those are. Wouldn't that be kind of like a gray? No, there's there's mm -hmm. black ones. Um, yeah. But they're not like lightsabers. They're more of like a. Like an actual sword made out of energy or something like that. Like they hold them. They're not um, yeah. lightsabers. Like they're they're different. I don't know like the exact yeah. thing about them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Speaking of future, though, you wanted to talk about something. Future Man. Yeah. Future. That's a show. Future Man. It's on Hulu. Oh, is it? Is it any good? Future. It's okay. All right. So uh, I feel like every day we get a little bit closer to the future. Yeah. Just step by step by step. The closer future to the future is tomorrow and also today. It's right now. Right now. <laughs> so uh, AI is yeah. one of these big things that are, that's, you know, everybody's talking mm -hmm. about in the future. What's the I stand for? Uh, intelligence. Okay. We don't What's the A that. stand for? Artificial. Cool, cool. So What's the I stand for again? Artificial intelligence. Yeah. So oh, wait, that's uh, both of them, not just the eye. Yeah, you're right. I was, I was confused. Yeah, well, you're confusing us now. It seems like you got to figure it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Google just came out with something. Uh, Imagine called, that. Called Google Duplex. Okay. Um, and what it is is it's, it's an like two AI. friends kind of living next door to each other. Kind of, yeah. I thought that was the Legos, or is that Duplo? That's, that's, that's Duplo. Duplo. Oh. That's the Lego knockoff. Du gotcha. Du du blocks. Du duplex. I played okay. Roblox. <laughs> um, but anyway, th there's this new program they have coming out yeah. that uh, can make phone calls for you and actually imitate human speech and understand and respond to the nuance of conversation. Is it mm -hmm. just phone calls? Like, is that just, or is that just the big thing about it? I think right now it's just phone calls. Okay. They've talked about some of the other things they plan on doing with it. You know, like um, holiday hours for business for businesses. How you know. You can be calling a business privately all these different times trying to figure out what their hours are on this specific holiday. And that mm -hmm. restaurant or business is going to get tons of calls asking what their hours are because Google can't update it because they don't know. They're saying they're going to use this program to call these businesses with altering hours and just place that one phone call, find out what their hours are, and then it would automatically update so everyone would know. Okay. But it... it calls and makes appointments and doing stuff like that. Like, look it up. It's called Google Duplex. It's really, really interesting. Um, but the most interesting thing about it is it's, it has passed what is called the Turing test. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the Turing test is, David? I do because you told me about it earlier. Okay, good. Do you yeah. know what the Turing test is? Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> We're all on the same page. Do you know what the Turing test is? We're gonna okay, so I'll tell you. So the Thanks, Turing Laura. test. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the Turing test is? <laughs> Clominoes. <laughs> that means let's go. <laughs> uh, but what the Turing test is, it's basically an artificial intelligence test. Okay. It requires three parties. The first party is the computer. Mm -hmm. The second party is a human being. Mm -hmm. And the third party is an evaluator. And the evaluator isn't supposed to know which of the other two parties is the computer and which is the human. And if it can blindly, using transcripts or whatever listen to this conversation between these two entities 
And if it cannot determine which of the two entities is a computer and which one is a human, then the computer has ta- passed the Turing test. And Google Duplex just passed the Turing test. So I wonder if it's like, okay, I'm looking at transcripts. I got A and B here. And and then the other person's like, uh, B? And if they get it right, they're like, well, it failed the Turing test, even though it's just a shot in the dark. I or, feel- or is the evaluator like, honestly, I don't fucking know. Yeah, exactly. I don't fucking know. Okay. But I mean, I, I feel like they, they go through a few different evaluators, but mm. it's like, if you're reading this thing and you can't immediately be like, oh, well, that's the fucking computer right there, yeah. then psh, Turing test passed. Yeah. But I fear if one of them is saying, like, kill all humans, that's probably the computer. Are you sure? Nope. What if I was talking to a computer and be like, how, do you, how would you feel about kill all humans? I would automatically look at the computer. The computer would pass the Turing test. Well, I mean, it depends on how the, how the response is there. Yeah. Yes. Kill all humans. <laughs> yeah. That's the computer. <laughs> kill all humans. It's saying kill all humans a whole bunch over and over and <laughs> over and over, over and over, over again. We should probably on this. It's self-sufficient. Uh, I mean, it probably just really like that game. <laughs> <laughs> kill all humans. I mean, I got a sequel. Yeah. Kill all humans again. Two. I never Dang. played it. Oh. It was just Kill All Humans 2. I, I never played it. Never did either. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad we talked about it. So good we didn't bother playing it. So, I mean, it's, it's cool because we talk about tech all the time and how yep. this assistant is advancing to a level now that you can ask your phone to set an appointment for you at something that you can't book online, and your phone, in the background, will call this place, have a conversation with someone over the phone, to book you an appointment, and then, boop, send you a notification. Hey, your appointment's been booked. You're good to go. See, I want this, like, you showed me a video for this, and, and I guess we can probably link to the video. We probably can. On, on here, but um, in watching that, I was like, I was saying the thing, like, I wish I had this for my day job, where I have to, like, <laughs> I have to make a lot of phone calls over the course of the day, and so many people do not answer the phone. If I had this thing just calling people... Like, while I'm dicking around on Facebook or whatever. You wouldn't have a job. I probably wouldn't have. Well, I mean, you probably couldn't sell them insurance, but it could be like, hey, I'm going to connect you to Dave, and he's going to take care of you. Like, hey, got somebody answer the phone. What's up? Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Let me give it a few years, and they'll probably be able to do your job. They'll probably be able to do my job. Hopefully, I'll, be, I'll have gotten promoted, or we'll be rich and famous by then. I don't know. Yeah, one yeah, of those yeah, two. Absolutely. Yeah. They smell hot dogs. I do, too. <laughs> Hopefully, we're not having strokes. Um. <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, so Turing test. Google passed. passed it. Google passed it. And soon Skynet will take over. Yeah. And hopefully it will like entertainment and the show. That's because what we're all we've about. we've taught good things about it. And we have. Google do. We are friends You're of welcome. robots. Yeah. And of humans, but robots also of robots. And also robots. Yeah. What else? Is that about it? I think that's about it. That's about it for the show. I feel like... Did Did you learn anything, Dave? I learned uh, before the show about the Turing test, and I told you about that on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you learn today? I learned what the Turing test was. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah. What about you guys at home? What did you learn today? What was your favorite part of the adventure? <laughs> Comment below. I learned that we don't know how to talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel and Netflix. <laughs> We're really good at this, guys. We're really good I at this. I had sh- something, but it was Netflix related. I'm like, do I really want to no, bring this up? Well, it's this show, <laughs> right? <laughs> Believe it or not, Netflix has shows, guys. Yeah. Oh, um, shit. It came out a couple days ago, I uh-huh. think. It's called The Rain. Okay. So the premise of it is it's uh, there's a virus going around, and you come in contact with this virus, you know, and it's just almost an immediate, you start seizing up, and you just die. Oh. And it's um, airborne, so when the rain comes down, mm-hmm. it brings the virus down. So if you're in the rain, and rainwater hits your skin, you're, you're dead. Yeah. Oh. And so it's about, um, you know, the main characters, they... Their father knew about the virus, puts them in a bunker, and so the show is they've been in there for like six years. They want to leave to go find their dad because, you know, they can't stay in the bunker anymore. They've exhausted it. And I don't know, it's just, it's pretty good. Like, it's just what, like, what they have to do, you know, like all the little things about it. Like, you know, all the people who've somehow managed to survive, you know, you see they've got 
like tarps around them, like their boots are taped up, you know, like yeah. <clears throat> you see like the puddles and like don't touch the puddles, you know, because it holds the rainwater. And it's just, oh, this is pretty cool. It's uh, hmm. the rain. Yeah, the rain. Oh, check that out. Well, we have to check um, I have, speaking of again, Hulu. I've been, you know when I have been able to watch Hulu, there's there's some cool stuff on there. Like mm. there's a new Starship Troopers, uh, CGI movie on there. I don't know if you ever watched any of the Starship Troopers movies. So. It's basically about uh, a world, you know, alternate reality kind of thing where uh, aliens called arachnids or bugs Ew. have started uh, attacking human colonies around the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to take care of that shit. Huh. Um, it's based on a book called Starship Troopers from the like the 40s or 50s or something. That uh, was very kind of ahead of its time, but it was uh, sort of... Saying how bad a society would be if uh, you had to do military service in order to be a citizen. Um, and it goes into that. This movie doesn't really deal with that. Okay. It's just action. The, and yeah. Alien. Pretty much action, <laughs> alien killing. That's pretty much where the movies have gone. Uh, they kind of started that way in the very first movie uh, back in the 90s when it came out. It had, uh, what's uh, Charlie Sheen's ex-wife's name? Denise Richards. Denise Richards. She was in it. Uh, Neil Patrick, Patrick Harris, Harris was in the very yeah. first one. Casper Van Dien, who you might not know. Because, because all he does is Starship <laughs> Trooper movies. <laughs> yeah. He's actually... Uh, he, no, wait. He was in Sleepy Hollow. Yes, he was. He yep. was in Sleepy Hollow. Uh, he's Got actually back half. for the CGI wow. movie, and he's a better voice actor than he is an actual actor, it turns out. I believe it. Um, no but, offense, Casper. Yeah. We like you. Hey, thanks for watching, Casper. Uh, you're a fantastic actor, and I didn't mean anything I just said. Um, he meant every word of it. <laughs> Take it to heart. Your friends won't yeah. lie to you, Casper. <laughs> That's true. There's also a new Resident Evil movie that was also uh, uh, animated. Okay. Resident Evil, I think it's called uh, Bioweapon Vengeance. Um, seen about half of it so far. Pretty good so what far. What was it made? Because there was one not too long ago called Vendetta. Maybe it's maybe it's Vendetta. Then. Okay. Bioweapon um, Vengeance and Vendetta. Or Vendetta. Who's to say? Yeah. It's one of the two. I mean, but I've only seen, I've kind of been cool. watching on my lunch breaks and stuff, so I've only seen the first like 20, 30 minutes of it. But so far, it's a Resident Evil movie. It's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. We'll have to check out some of these things. More entertainment assignments. Yeah. On top of the comic books that I have to read <laughs> that I was given last week. Yeah. Busy, busy bees. I have so many comic books I need to read. Yeah. yeah. Got I'm, movies I'm, to watch, shows to watch, comics to read, music to listen to, a girlfriend to love. It's like. <laughs> One of them is going to have to drop off. Yeah. This is going to be the girlfriend? No. Oh, that's good. <laughs> no. Test and you passed. <laughs> no. Um, the Turing test. <laughs> <laughs> You're a human. Um, I might be what? intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've talked before about uh, Comic Bento, which, I, which I've been subscribing to for a while, which is like a... Then you a, have massive stacks of comics so everywhere. Comics. Yeah. You have like, a I lot, Dave. Between four and six graphic novels every month come to my door and I've actually thought about doing kind of an unboxing thing for for the channel for that. Why not? Because uh, it's actually really cool because you get not just Marvel and DC comics but like all kinds of like companies I've never heard of that make comics uh, and then companies that have Dark Horse Image um, Valiant like pretty big shy. companies that just aren't the same that it's not just the same Marvel and DC stuff you yeah. hear about all the time but um, that's pretty cool. If you want to check it out comicbinto.com it's made by Blind Ferret um, How much do you pay a month for that? Uh, it's I think I think I pay one hundred thirty five dollars every six months, and then every I think the every box that I get is worth at least like sixty bucks, and so actually not too long ago I added like I went on you know add up the cover price of all the books that I that I've gotten through Comic Bento, and I have well over like two thousand dollars worth of books, and I've paid maybe five hundred bucks. I would just start. Organizing all of them mm -hmm. into a collection so that one day you can bulk sell it. Oh, I like selling books. I like holding on to my books, passing down to my kids. You got a lot of books. I got a lot of books. Yeah. You reader, you're such an. Here animator. you go, son. <laughs> what? I can't. Yeah, I can't handle this. Read all these over the summer. Uh, I learned today that uh, Dave is a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> Of entertaining books. Of entertaining books, but Is a that order justify it? nonetheless. Yeah. I'm not holding on to like pizza boxes and like newspapers and shit. All right. Well, let me yes. ask you this, Dave. Yes. Let me ask you this. How many VHS do you still have? 
I don't know if I still have my VHSs. I still have some. I might. I think I might have them in a trunk upstairs, actually. Okay, so... But... Just ballpark. How many VHSs do you think you have? Less than 50. About how many VCRs would you say you have? Uh, I actually just got rid of my my last VCR. Less than 50. <laughs> <laughs> less than 50. <laughs> less than 50, yeah. So I'm just saying, you know, eventually... No. I actually did use my... V I had, like, a combo VCR-DVD player for a long oh, time. Oh, yeah. And so I used it for a long time. And I would actually watch my old VHSs from time to time. Uh, but it finally crapped out. So. I can't. I can't get past the quality anymore. It's just like going back and watching a DVD. I can't do it. I'm spoiled for choice. Really? <sighs> it's not HD, bro. It's not. You, you know, know what? You know I watched the other night. Choice. Godzilla, the Matthew with Broderick Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Woo! That's a good one. I, I mean, it's not. But it's. it's I enjoyed it. I it kept me did. entertained. <laughs> yep. All right. You okay? Did that hurt? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. All right, cool. All right, well, uh, anything else, guys? Yeah. Cool. All right. Hey, do you like this show? Do you think we should keep doing this show? Do you want to give us some money? Patreon.com slash TalkieBox. They probably answered no to all three of those That's questions. <laughs> if Maybe they'll accidentally go there and donate some money. I don't know. What are you doing here? <laughs> Why am I on this website clicking the donate button? I don't get it. <laughs> we just need to learn some hypnosis. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. Hypnotoad. Donate one quarter of your bank account. <laughs> Hopefully, it's more than a quarter. Hopefully. Yeah. But we'd be yeah. happy with a quarter. We sure would. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, other social media platforms. We're also widely uh, known to be on the internet. Yeah. So, the check whole us thing. Out. We're, we're everywhere. We actually yeah. are the internet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, good. Good. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.